thank you so much. I had planned to ask you to do the song, I Worship You. I had asked the Holy Spirit. That's the second time you've done it with you, and I appreciate it. I think what I told Steve after I heard them sing it one Saturday, it just kept going over and over through the week in my ears. And this morning I started uh, hearing it again in my mind, and there was the very first one. Now I want to talk to you about a woman who's nameless in the Bible, but she was a great woman, and I want to share some things that I have learned by reading about her. I won't give you the scripture right now. You might know it because uh, you're probably reading it while I'm trying to tell it, and that's something that I used to do with children. I said, now, if I'm telling you the story, just go on and listen. So I don't mean to be telling you the same thing, but anyway, let's go on with this. This woman was called the Shunammite woman. And uh, I had talked to a couple of ladies in the uh, congregation about it. I was so excited. I think that was during the time Zenith and I had gotten to the story in the Bible. And I was so inspired, and I remember telling Johnny and someone else the story. So hopefully I will remember it. But I really forgot my notes this morning, so I uh, brought them in case I forget. Now let's talk about the characters. The characters were the Shunammite woman, her husband, Elisha, and Elisha's servant was there. And his servant was Gehazi. Now it takes place in Shunem, Carmel, and Jezreel. I don't have the map, but if that was the map, well, let's say that Mount Carmel was here, Shunem was here, and Jezreel was there. And that's the route, that's the circuit that Elisha took. This was his assignment. So anyway, the cities in the Shunem, Carmel, and Jezreel were located in the spacious Jezreel Valley. The Jezreel Valley got its name from the city of Jezreel. Now this is a group of people who were the descendants of Issachar. This is where the tribe lived. And they lived in this beautiful, I just couldn't imagine how beautiful the plain uh, that they lived on. And I also did a little reading and I found out that um, there were diamonds in the soil. God always provides for his people. So the people of Issachar had a lot of wealth, some of them did, but this particular lady was a wealthy lady. Now, Elisha doesn't tell us her name, but her deeds are so outstanding that we just know her by the Shunammite woman who we've known enough. Shunan was a little village in the tribe of Issachar. Shunan was north of Jezreel between Carmel and Jezreel. Elisha did not tell us the name, but she was a woman of high rank, she was very rich. And in this spacious valley, I'm imagining that her home must have been kind of up from the highway. They had a commanding view of all the travelers, excuse me, all the travelers that passed by. So she had noticed that the man of God uh, had passed by and the way that she knew he was a man of God, he had a staff and the apparel that he wore let her know that he was a man of God. So it tells me a lot about her that she was a woman of God because she was looking to see who would travel that highway that she could help. So she and her husband were Jewish, and I think I mentioned they were the tribe of Issachar. Mm -hmm. They were very wealthy, yet humble. The motto of the tribe of Issachar was ready for the battle. Re I'm sorry, ready for the burden. The Shunammite woman was determined to use their lovely home to help people who passed by. We're going to take a look at the biblical account in which I will paraphrase. One day, Elisha went to Shunam where the notable woman persuaded him to eat some food. She said to her husband, now, as this is a wealthy woman with a beautiful home, she said to her husband, let's build uh, him a room 
on the roof. And I'm thinking that why this is melting. Now, I'm thinking why that it was on the roof so that when he would come, he could just go right up to his room. He wouldn't have to disturb any of them. But she was so concerned about him until she asked her husband to let's build a room and she wanted to make sure there was a table and a chair and a lampstand there so that he would have whatever he needed. Elijah was touched by her ministry. One day he came to her house and uh, he was so appreciative of her concern for him that he asked her, what do you need or what could I give you? And she said, I live among my people. In other words, she was saying, I don't need anything because God had blessed her with wealth. But she wasn't proud. She was humble. And her mission was to help people who came by and especially came by Shunem in the Jezreel Valley. So, her husband was old, and um, the Hazai told Elisha, said, her husband is old and she doesn't have a son. So I know that was something that was interesting to her ears when Elisha prophesied about next year this time, you will be holding a son. And she said to him, oh man of God, don't lie to me. Well, she knew her husband was old and she was thinking that it would be impossible. But the baby came and after a year passed, she had the baby and she held him. So the child, one day, the child was in the house and he went out to his father. And evidently, it was, the scripture doesn't say, but evidently it was very hot. And he said to his father, oh my head, oh my head. So evidently also they had a lot of servants there. So he uh, told uh, one of the servants to take the child to his mother. So the child sat on the mother's lap until noon and then he died. So this lady went out of the house and she said to her husband, I'm going to see the man of God. And her husband said, the man of God, uh, I'm paraphrasing now, it's not a new moon, it's not the Sabbath. She said, all is well. Could you imagine your child dead? And you were, and she evidently had so much faith that she had to get to the man of God. So she told her husband to get one of the young men and the donkey. And uh, she told the, the young man that was going with her, and said, you just ride and you just, I'm putting it in my way, you just go as fast as you can. And I imagine in today's uh, terminology, we would say put the metal to the pedal. Yeah. So uh, anyway, they rushed on there. And then when she was about to get there, now she's coming from Shuna to uh, up to uh, Carmel. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine this hill when she gets there. Elisha, when she gets near the hill, Elisha looks out and sees her coming. And he tells his servant, Jehazi, to go down there and meet her. So he did. And, uh, but she didn't want Jehazi. She wanted the man of God. And when she got there, she grabbed his legs around his legs. And Jehazi tried to push her away. So he, uh, Elisha said, oh no, said, uh, she is grieved. And the Lord has not shown me what she's, what the problem is. So anyway, when she talked to Elisha, she said, did I ask you for a son? Didn't I ask you not to deceive me? And um, so Elisha told Gehazi, take my staff and go ahead. So Gehazi went ahead of them, and he took the staff and laid on the child. Now the child's up, I don't know if I mentioned, but the child is in <coughs> Elisha's room on his bed. Gehazi goes up there and comes back that it happens. So after that, the lady told him she would not, uh, the Shunammite woman said, I will not go without you. So Elisha gets up and goes with her. He goes back down. That's, I imagine that's about 20 miles between Carmel and Shunam. So they go back there. And uh, so Elisha goes in the room and he closes the door behind him. 
He doesn't let anybody come in the room. So he, what he does is that he prostrates himself over the child. He puts his hands on his hands, his eyes on his eyes. And um, so uh, nothing, well, I think if I remember correctly, the child, the body became a little warm. So then he started walking around, might have gone back downstairs and came up. And he did it again and put himself over the child. And the child would sneeze seven times. So he told me, he's like, go and get the Shunammite woman and bring her up. And when she came, he said, pick up your child. So she picked up her child, and her child was alive. Now what I want to say about that is that the Shunammite woman had a lot of faith. She had a lot of tenacity, and she had a lot of courage because she believed in the man of God, that he was connected to God. So she had to believe more in God. Uh, Jesus had to come and said, I am the resurrection. But evidently, she knew that God was the resurrection because she didn't give up. And every time they would ask her, oh, when she started up the hill to see Gehazi, uh, I'm sorry, to see Elijah, he was asking questions, uh, is everything well with your your child? I mean, I'm in the right order. Everything well, uh, you know, but in other words, is everything wrong with everybody at your house? And she said, some translation says it is well, but I'm saying all is well. So she was quite a lady, quite a woman. And uh, God had put her there for the mission that she was to do. And let me go and see. Now, this is what I wanted to say. The Shunammite woman had four qualities that every child of God should have. She was content. She was wealthy. And I imagine this young woman wanted a child, but she didn't complain. She didn't say, well, uh, God, why don't I have a child? Or why don't I have this or that? She was kind. She had a kind heart. She was compassionate. She was compassionate. She was persistent. She was persistent in bringing her child back to life. She wasn't going to let anything stop her from getting to the man of God. So the uh, last thing I want to say about her is that she had faith, knowing that there is nothing, absolutely nothing, too hard for God. God moves by our faith. God doesn't just move by what we say we want or need. But you put that mustard seed faith out there, and I'm telling you, you will hear from God. Now I want to tell you about my experience. Uh, my, you heard me talk about my primary doctor. She um, had me come in, and all at once she said, no, but I don't like what I see. I'm going to have the nurse come in and give you an EKG. So the nurse came in, and she looked at it, and she's in a Kaiser facility where that they, it's small, but they have everything there. They can do the EKGs and all the different things. But to uh, make the story short, she said, I might have to send you to a cardiologist. I don't know. She said, but I think I'll wait before I send you to the cardiologist. So anyway, she said she didn't like what she saw. So about, I imagine, five days or so after that, I got a call from Kaiser. And uh, the lady said, I guess it was a nurse. I was so excited. I don't even remember her name. She said, uh, we have good news for you. Dr. Leatherwood said, your heart is good. And I want to tell you what happened. When I was there with Heaven, and Felix was there in the room with me, and that's something that this primary doctor also told me. She said, uh, when you go to the doctor, have Felix go with you, when Felix goes to the doctor, have you go with him. I said, well, sometimes Felix said that he's okay. She said, go with him. So that it's something you need to hear that he doesn't hear. So that was a good point. But uh, as I lay there, I would kind of look over at the monitor because you could see your heart pulsating and everything. And I thought about the shoe my woman. So all at once, a peace came over me that I can't really tell you. I get emotional. I was so calm. I didn't worry about anything. I knew everything was all right. So I said to myself, and uh, the young man was still working. I think it took about 20 minutes. And I said, all is well. 
Jesus is my everything. All right. And then I told you about what uh, Dr. Leatherwood said. But the doc my primary doctor is Dr. Jesus. And uh, Dr. Leatherwood is my secondary doctor. <laughs> So this is where I get my help. Yeah. And what I learned, and I'm telling you, brethren, if you know that all is well, because you know God who's big enough, great enough, you know, it's, can you imagine a God that knows everything, mm -hmm. is everywhere, and has all power, and maybe a little ant in Africa, and something's mm -hmm. on, uh, in Argentina, or yeah. someplace, he knows about all of that. But he cares more about you than he does the animals, the, excuse me, the ants or what have you. So I just wanted to share some things that I learned from this Shunammite woman mm -hmm. that may help you. All is well. All is well. Jesus is my everything. Yes, ma'am.